Hello, North Point. Thank you for joining us today as we are wrapping up our Tales from the End series. I don't know about you, but I have so enjoyed this series as we have been uh, listening to the stories of people in our community talk about how they've been impacted by our community. I have found these stories to be so encouraging, so inspiring, and so challenging. And, uh, you know, we call it Tales from the End because we really believe that God has called us to be the end at the crossroads of life. And we take that out of the parable of the Good Samaritan that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 10 as that, as that Samaritan finds that Jewish man beaten and stripped of his clothes and left half dead. And that Samaritan man picks him up and carries him to the inn where he can be taken care of. And that's who we are, that we believe that is our identity. We are the place that Jesus can bring people who are broken, people who are hurting, people who are disappointed and discouraged, people who are confused and frustrated, Jesus can bring those people right here to the end and they can be cared for in an environment that gives hope and help because that's what we offer here at the end. We offer hope and we offer help. And so we're going to dive in today, but before we do that, well, we want to say our declaration. We say this every Sunday here at North Point. We say this by putting our hand over our heart because this word, that's where that declaration comes from. We say it with me today. I am a child of God. I am loved, adored, and accepted by my Father in heaven. I am forgiven and free. Sin has no hold on me. I am an overcomer, more than a conqueror, full of the Spirit of God, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Holy Spirit, open up my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my mind to understand, and my heart to receive everything that God has for me today in Jesus' name. Come on, go ahead and put a big amen on that. Well, if you have missed any of these last few weeks, I really encourage you to go back and listen to these stories. I believe that these stories will transform your life. We heard Patricia's story. We heard the Nestle Road story. We heard Alex and Nino and Kevin's story. And these stories were stories of salvation and restoration and reconnection and finding a brand new purpose in serving other people. I, I have been so inspired by these stories, but today, today we're going to talk about the most important story. Today we're going to talk about the most valuable story, and that is your story. That's exactly right. You have a story. You have a story that the world needs to hear. Now, typically, whenever we hear this, this is what people tend to say. But, now, but Philip, I don't really have a story. Nobody would want to hear my story. Or what good could my story even do for somebody? And you see, that's exactly what the enemy wants you to think. The enemy knows how powerful and transformative your story actually is. So he does his best to convince us that we don't have a story, that nobody would want to or need to hear our story, and that our story would do no good if we told it. You see, for some reason, we have bought into this idea that if our story doesn't involve being addicted to crack cocaine, sleeping in our car because we're homeless, or spending months in prison, then my story is insignificant. No, my friend, that's not true. Your story is powerful. I want you to type it in the chat right now. My story is is powerful. Come on, if you're watching with somebody, I want you just to testify, just, just declare that right now. My story is powerful. Come on, the world needs to hear your story. Your friends need to hear your story. Your coworkers and your neighbors, they need to hear your story. Why? Because your story is powerful. Let's go into the Bible and let's see how powerful our story really is. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, the scripture says, They triumphed over him 
by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They, who is they? They is the believers, the, the saints, those who have put their faith, hope, and trust in Jesus. They triumphed over him. Who is him? That is the devil. That we, the believers, would triumph over the devil by the blood of Jesus and by the word of our testimony. See, if God is going to use our testimony, now what is our testimony? That would be our story of what God has done for us, what God has done in us, and what God has done through us. If God is going to use our testimony to defeat the devil in the end, then why do we not believe our testimony is powerful now? If this is one of the things that God is going to use, our story of what God has done in us, what God has done for us, what God has done through us, if that is how we will defeat the enemy in the end, why are we so convinced that our story is not powerful now? No, your story is powerful. Your story of how God healed your heart after divorce your story of how God lovingly brought you back into faith after years of wandering, your story of how God is helping you raise a special needs child right now, your story of how God gave you peace even in the midst of a global pandemic, your story of how God blessed you with a new, improved, and even better job regardless of the chaos of our world right now. You see, somebody is going through divorce. Somebody is struggling with the question, will God take them back? Somebody is, is scared right now. Uh, trying to raise a special needs child. Somebody's stressed out, doubting whether peace is even possible in the condition of our world right now. And somebody is looking for a job. And do you know what those somebodies need? They need your story. Your story is powerful. And not only that, your story matters. Come on, type it in the chat right now. My story matters. Not only is your story powerful, type it in the chat. Say it out loud right, right there where you are. My story matters. My story matters. All we have to do is look at the Bible. We have the Bible today because people told their stories. That's how we have the Bible. When you when you go into the New Testament and you read the first four books of the New Testament, we call those the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We have those because they were the stories that people told about Jesus from their perspective, through their lens. Think with me for a moment. What if Matthew or John would have said, Hi, nobody wants to hear my story? Well, what if Matthew or John would say, well, we'll just let somebody else tell their story. Come on, we wouldn't have the beauty of the scriptures because they would not have told their story. And so many times we don't tell our story. And, and listen, there are reasons why we don't. And I want to spend just a little bit of time today talking about the reasons that we don't tell our stories. What are the reasons? If our story is powerful, and if our story matters, then we should tell our story. And I can promise you this, is if you talk about Patricia's story, if you, if you talk about Kevin's story, if you talk about Michael and DJ's story, if you talk about Alex and Nino's story, you would say, wow, those stories were impactful. That was their story. But your story is powerful and your story matters. So why don't we tell our stories? There must be a reason. Let me give you three reasons today that we don't tell our stories. The first is this. Our stories are messy. Our stories are messy. There are, there are lots of details in our stories that we are ashamed of. There are a lot of decisions that we made that we knew better even when we were making those choices. There are lots of moments that we wish we could delete. But hey, join the crowd. We are messy 
people. The Bible says that we were born into sin. Let's see, take even a deeper look in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. The scripture says this, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. For everyone sinned. Sin is messy and everyone sinned. That's why the Bible says in Romans uh, chapter 3 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God or fallen short of God's glorious standard because all have sinned. And because all of us have sinned, guess what? That means that our lives are going to be messy. But I've got good news. And the good news is that God does not run away from messy stories. God doesn't run away from messy stories. The Bible is full of messy stories. People like Moses. Moses was humble, but Moses had a severe anger problem. David. David was a great king and a a wonderful worshiper, but he was also an adulterer and a murderer, and that created a messy story. Jacob was blessed by God, but he was a pathological liar and a deceiver, and that made the story messy. Samson was physically strong, but he was spiritually and morally weak, and that led to a messy story. The prophets, they spoke for God, but they struggled with fear, impurity, insecurity, and depression. And this made for a lot of messy stories. You see, God is not intimidated by a mess, nor is God intimidated by your mess. But he does want you to use your mess by turning your mess into a message of his faithfulness and goodness in your life. You see, sometimes our mess stays a mess because we aren't turning it into a message. I want to say that again. Sometimes our mess stays just a mess because we aren't turning it into a message. See, you have to give your mess a meaning. You have to give your mess a meaning. And how do you give your mess a meaning? You give your mess a meaning when you turn that mess into a message that can help somebody else with their mess. That's exactly right. You got to turn your mess into a message. Give it some meaning so that you can help other people deal with the messes that they are dealing with in their lives. The, the Bible says this in Romans chapter 7, and, and I love this because this is what the Apostle Paul did. He turned his mess into a message. And in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, it says, And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it Anyway, I don't know about you, but those scriptures have encouraged me so much in my journey with Jesus. Paul was writing here and he says, look, I want to do good and I don't do it. I don't want to do bad, but I find myself doing it anyway. This was Paul's mess, but Paul turned his mess into a message. He gave it meaning to help other people with their mess, to let them know that it is okay. I am on this journey of faith. I am pursuing after Jesus. I am going here. And yes, it is a little messy. And yes, we make some bad choices. And yes, we do what we wish we wouldn't do. But I am on this journey. And he gave his mess some meaning and turned it into a message and he sent it to the church in Rome so that they could be blessed. Even out of his mess, there was a message of encouragement. We see Paul writing to the Corinthian church saying, hey, I am going to boast in my weakness because in my weakness, I get to see the strength of Christ active in me. Come on, what a powerful message that we can boast in our weaknesses. That's what we have to do. We have to do the exact same thing that Paul did. And could we even take it a step further to say, not only was Paul writing this message to Romans, not only was he writing this message in Corinthians, 
but he was writing this message to you. Paul was saying, I'm going to turn my mess into a message of encouragement for you so that in your moments of weakness, you will know that you don't have to give up and you don't have to quit. Those are moments where the strength of Jesus Christ can be shown in you like never before. But then maybe if we would tag onto that and Paul is saying, hey, I'm going to use my mess to be a message for you. But now I want you to use your mess to be a message for others. But not only is, uh, is our story messy, our story is also sketchy. <laughs> our story is, is sketchy because our stories are they're just a sketch. They're, they're incomplete. They're, they're not a finished product. And sometimes what happens is we don't want to share our story prematurely because something might change and we're not exactly sure how it's going to end. We're not confident of the ending, so I don't want to share this first part of the story because it might not end like it started. And we say things like, what, what if I share my story about how God blessed me with an incredible job, but then I lose that job? Well, what if I share my story about how God has given me peace during this season, but then after I share that story, I lose my mind on somebody? And we say, what if I share my story about how God healed my body and then I get sick again? What if, what if, what if, what if? Listen to me. An incomplete story is not an inadequate story. Don't you hear me? An incomplete story is not an inadequate story. You see, we get concerned because we're afraid our story is sketchy, and because it's sketchy, it's going to get messy. And if it gets messy, it's going to lose its effectiveness. But see, my friends, that is not the way it works. It is not the way. I want you to listen to this. In, in, in Philippians, this is what Paul writes to the church in Philippi. And in chapter 1, verse 6, he says, I pray with great faith for you because I am fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, we, we think our story needs to be perfect, but the story just needs to be in process. We think our story needs to be perfect. It needs to be whole. It needs to be complete. Our story doesn't need to be perfect. Our story just needs to be in process. You see, the glory of our story is that it's not finished yet. The glory of our story is what the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippi, and he says you're in the process of maturing, and God is going to keep putting his finishing touches on your life. You are in the process of growing, the process of transforming. You are in the process of developing. You are in the process of becoming. You are in the process, and that is the glory of your story, is that you are not a finished product, but God is working in you, and God is working through you, and that work that he started, he will finish it. On the good days and the bad days, he's working through you. On the mountaintops and in the valleys, he is working through you. And he is not going to stop working. You are in process. So your story does not have to be perfect because the glory of your story is that God is working in you and you are still in process. Yes, your story is going to be sketchy. And yes, it's going to get messy, but tell your story anyway. Yes, it's sketchy. Yes, it will get messy, but your story matters and your story is powerful and you need to tell your story anyway, which takes us to the last thing, the last reason why we don't share our stories is our stories are messy, our stories are sketchy, and then lastly, our stories are scary. Telling our story is scary. It, it's intimidating. It's intimidating to get vulnerable, to be open and honest with another human being. 
we start wondering, what will they think about us if I say this? We begin to say, how will people treat me afterwards once they know this about me? W will they ask me more questions about my life? Maybe things that I really don't want to answer. Or, or maybe will they ask me other things about my faith that I don't have answers to? I want you to know that this happens to everybody. This happens to everybody, including myself. That's right. I've been preaching the gospel for 22, three years now, 23 years now. I've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And can I be honest with you? There are moments where I still get scared to tell my story. I mean, this happens whenever I get on an airplane and I I sit down and you start that small talk with the person sitting next to you and and then that question is always going to come up. So what do you do for a living? So what do you do for a living? And whenever I say, well, I am a pastor, I'm a pastor, there is no telling what I'm going to get. And whenever I said that one time, I told a lady I was sitting next, I'm a pastor. She gave me the, the Catholic sign of the cross and said, said so, I'm so sorry, I'm a sinner. And I was like, oh, it's 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 okay. Like, I'm, I'm a I'm a sinner too, actually. I'm, 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 I'm normal. One, one time I was telling a person, I said, I'm a pastor. And they said, you know, my uncles just started going to this church and they started telling me about the church. And I was like, no, 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 that's like, that's not a church. I'm pretty sure that's a cult. Like, that's not a good thing. I mean, you never know what you are going to get whenever you, whenever you say, I'm a pastor pastor. And, and sometimes whenever I'm looking at people and I'm I'm trying to figure out kind of where, where they are at and uh, maybe they're not a person of faith, man, you know, they sit down and man, they just start cursing or whatever. I'm like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know. And they, that question comes up and they say, hey, uh, so what do you do for a living? I say, oh, I'm a coach. I'm a coach. They say, oh, oh, really? Well, what do you coach? I say, I, I coach people. Oh, well, what do, you, what do you do for people? I say, oh, I help them improve the, their quality of life uh, by instructing, inspiring them to make better decisions and think better, to be better, to do better. And they always go, oh, that's cool. And I'm always like, whew, whew, got away, got away with that one. And you would think, well, why do I do that? Why do I say, I'm going to go, why do I not say I'm a pastor? Because just like you, I get intimidated to tell my story. I feel uneasy. I'm not sure how they are going to take it. I don't know where this conversation is possibly going to go. I don't know what experiences they may have had with another Christian or with the organized church. I don't know what to expect. And because of that uncertainty, I get afraid in that moment. And I just want you to know, we get scared to tell our story because telling our story is scary. We get scared, scared to tell our story because telling our story is scary. And I, I have to let you know, I wish I could tell you something else right now, but the fear and intimidation doesn't go away. We just learn to push our way through it because the individual needs our story. It doesn't go away. Sure, it gets easier a little bit the more you do it and the more you build your confidence up to do it and you, the more you pave that way in your life. Of course, yes, it does get a little easier, but I want you to know the fear and the intimidation doesn't go away. As I said, 23 years now, and I still feel that in moments, but, but your story matters. My story matters. Your story is powerful. My story is powerful, and it needs to be told. Let's wrap up our, our time together today in Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2, Jesus has just ascended into heaven, and the disciples have been uh, gathered for what Jesus promised them, that they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit, that they would receive power to be God's witnesses on the earth, to tell God's story and that's exactly what happens in Acts chapter 2. And after this experience that they have with the Holy Spirit in the beginning of Acts 2, the Bible says that Peter walks out of the place that they were meeting in and, and he begins to say, and he says, people of Israel, listen. So here he's about to tell his story. He says, God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him as you well know. 
God raised Jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of this. And then it goes on at the end of the chapter and it says, those who believe that what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Wow, Peter just comes down from this experience and he just says, hey, people of Israel, listen up. I have a story to tell you. God sent Jesus. We all saw his miracles. We, we, we beheld his power with our own eyes and, and his resurrection. We are witnesses of this. And he just told that story. And the Bible says that 3,000 people were added to the church that day. Now you say, wow, 3,000? Come on, I mean, I, when am I going to ever have the chance to do that? No, no, no. I don't want you to see a group. I want you to see individuals. I don't want you to see a mass. I want you to see individual people that made a decision to connect with God in a brand new way because of of Peter's story. This was Peter's account of what God had done for him, what God had done in him, and now what God was doing through him. And do you know that there are people, there are people in that crowd who needed, they needed to hear Peter's story, and there are people in your life who need to hear your story? Sure, your story is messy, and yes, it's a little sketchy, and it's always going to be scary, but that doesn't mean it's not necessary. Your story matters. Your story is powerful. And your story needs to be told because your family and friends, they need to hear your story. Your coworkers and neighbors, they need to hear your story. You need to tell your story on social media. People need to know how God has transformed your life. You see, as we conclude this series on Tales from the End, and you think, what is the most powerful story of the end? What's the most powerful tale of the end? The most powerful tale of the end is your story. Your story is powerful. Your story matters. So don't let anything keep you from telling your story. And as you step out like Peter did and you tell your story, there are going to be people that respond to that story and connect with God and their lives will never be the same. And it was all because you decided to tell your story. It's messy, it's sketchy, and it's scary but you determined that it was necessary. Let us pray together. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. God, God, thank you. Thank you that you can use each and every one of us to build your kingdom. We don't have to have a seminary degree. We don't have to be able to quote so many scriptures or, or, or say so many prayers to be qualified to be used by you. No, God, you will use all of those who want to be used by you. And Father, thank you. Thank you that you've given us all a story. You've given us all a testimony, a story, God, of what you have done for us, what you have done in us, and what you are doing through us. And God, I pray right now that none of us would allow the, the messiness of our story, that none of us would allow the sketchiness of our story, and that none of us would allow the scariness of our story to keep us from telling our story. So Father, I just pray right now that the tales from the end would not stop. This is the end of the series, but it's just the beginning of a movement a movement of telling our stories. So Father, I pray for all of those right now who are watching this saying, I want to be an innkeeper who tells my story. I want to be an innkeeper that tells about what God has done for me and in me and through me. I want to tell my story because it matters. I want to tell my story because it's powerful. I want to tell my story because God has asked me to tell it. Come on, if that's you right now, you say, Philip, I want to be that type of innkeeper. I want to be an innkeeper that tells my story. Come on, just tell God right now. Say, God, that's me. Right there where you are, just say, God, that's me. 
God, that's me. God, that's me. I want to tell my story for your glory so that your kingdom can grow and be established here on the earth, that lives may be changed and transformed because of your grace and because of your power. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray today. Amen, 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 and amen. Come on, I'm believing right now. If you said, that is me, that is me, I'm believing right now that you are entering into the greatest season of your life. It's a season of adventure. As you begin to tell your story, lives are going to be changed. And I promise you, you will never regret telling your story because God is going to do miracles through it. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait to see you right back here next week. God bless you.